Hi everyone, and in today's video, we're going to just take a look at some beginner's tips to getting started with PSO2 New Genesis. Hi everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to just look at another beginner's um, video for PSO2 New Genesis. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through some little tips that will be handy for people who are just getting started with the game. Um, maybe just some quick tips of just how to earn money quickly when you first start, but also just some things you should be aware of when you first start the game. So first thing I want to do is just, just let you know that when you first start the game, um, your first character will usually have to go through um, what's called the prologue, which is the part of the game where you're in Alio Town. Now, I believe that you are going to be able to skip that soon at some point, um, but just know that at the moment you will probably have to do the prologue the first time you go through. So just complete the prologue when you start, and that will end up bringing you to Central City in Alio, and that's where you can start to party up with other players. So when you first start the game, if you do the prologue, you won't actually be able to party up with people initially. Um, it's all designed to be one player until you actually get to Alio, um, until you actually get to the main city in Alio, Central City. Once you've got to Central City, um, that's when you can start to party up with other people. So once you get there, um, some things you want to be looking out for. So first of all, there's a couple of things you want to try and do as soon as you get to Central, really. So... One of the first things I would say is try and find all of the different Ryuka devices and region mags in the area. Now, I do have videos on my channel already for these, so um, they will show you where all of the different um, Ryuka devices and region mags are for all of the different four regions. There is also another video as well that includes the extra ones that are added in the version 2 update. Uh, make sure you get those because they make travel a lot more convenient in NGS. So as you can see, if you open the, the world map, all these different areas now on this the reason i've chose this character is because i know that she doesn't have some of the um ryukas so for example i have the mistress south ryuka and i've got the mr north ryuka but there is actually another ryuka in here as well so if i wanted to go to around this area i would have to run it or go from one of these ryukas so it is massive massively important to find all the different ryuka devices just to cut down the amount of actual travel that you've got to do because if you can fast travel somewhere you may as well do it Similarly, it helps to have all the different region mags just because each region mag has a different buff. So you can see this one here, if we look at this one, this one gives us uh, EXP plus 10% when it's full. And it also gives us a personal boost of a rare drop rate. Whereas a different one will give you rare drop rate and rare drop rate. And then another one might give you what this one here. This one will give you attack potency and rare drop rate as well. So you can see they all differ slightly. So make sure you get all the different region mags as well. There are normally about three in each region. Similarly, you want to try and unlock all of the battle deers. So there are two battle deers in each region. So there is a yellow battle deer, which is typically used to get loads of experience. And there is a purple battle deer, which is what you do use to fight gigantics. And you can get um, various things from that. So, for example, if we look at Elio, you can see that in West Elio, we've got the yellow part of Elio. This is your yellow battle deer. This is a fantastic way of getting levels early on. And then in North Elio, we have the purple battle deer, which is used to fight Gigantix. And as I've said, there's one of those in each region. So definitely try and look out for those as well. Similarly, when you first start, you also want to look out for these, which are cocoons. And there are cocoons, and there are also towers like this. Cocoons and towers are basically areas that are used. They're the small challenges that you complete. They're normally pretty easy to complete. And for completing them for the first time, you get skill points. And the skill points are what you use to actually level the skills on your different classes. And those skills will stick amongst all the different classes. So once you've done these once, you don't need to do them again for each class. So definitely make sure you do all the cocoons and, um, and towers as well, because you don't want to be missing out on skill points. So next thing is... You probably want to know how to earn experience and money quite easily. Now, I do have a video on my channel already that goes through the basics of this. But just to cover it very, very quickly, some easy ways of getting experience are the yellow battle deers that I've already covered. They are specifically designed to give a big chunk of experience. And honestly, you can power level a character pretty much from low level until the cap, just using the yellow battle deers. Once you get to really high level, you will also find that just the combat zones in general will give really good experience anywhere, and you will level fast anywhere. But for the lower levels in particular, I would recommend doing the yellow battle deers. So 
Another way of leveling really quickly as well is some client orders or tasks or quests or whatever you want to call them. So if you go into your tasks and quests menu, you can see we've got all these different tasks. And the side tasks and main tasks. The main tasks for stories, so this is the main story quests. These are always fantastic for experience. So again, I've chosen this character because she hasn't completed story yet. So you can see that for completing this chapter of story, we actually get one and a half million experience, which is a huge, huge amount of experience and will get you quite a few levels early on. Um, so definitely make sure that you're always keeping up on the story. Even if you're not really interested in doing the story, at least complete it just for the experience. Secondly, we also have the some side orders that give decent experience as well. So for example, this one, this um, Rookies Run Ragged, um, this gives us 300,000 just for killing 30 enemies. There is a second stage to it, which you can see here, but none of these are very difficult. And 300,000 experience is a really nice little boost. Similarly, this one from um, Rezo, this asks us to kill three equalized enemies, and there's another stage to it after that. Sometimes the second stage is literally just talk to the NPC again as well, so it's not always actually do something else. But you can see that if we're completing this one, we get a million experience, which again is a huge amount. There is also an NPC in most of the areas called, I believe it's called Gaiden. Yeah, this guy here, this Arx Instructor Gaiden. If you talk to him, he has quite a few orders as well. And some of these give insane amounts of experience. I mean, this one here gives a million. But there are some that give way, way more than that as well. So definitely check this guy out if you haven't done his tasks. He will more or less power level you. Another reason for getting the levels as well is because also in the task menu, in the limited time tasks, we have all these different tasks here, which are get nine star weapon, hunt a level up, force level up. And there's one of these for each class. Essentially what these are is if you get a class two level 65, you will get given an Argenti weapon for each of the weapons that a class can use. So for example, if I get Hunter to level 65, I'll get an Argenti Sword plus 80, an Argenti Wire plus 80, and an Argenti Spear plus 80. Now these are they're 9 star weapons. They are weak 9 stars, so that they're not particularly great. But they have really nice affixes. They're already at max um, potential. And they all have Fixer Attack level 5 as well. So if you've got nothing else to use, these are really, really good stand-ins. I would say that at endgame, these are probably the minimum that you want to be using. Um, you do want to be moving on from them. But if you're just starting out with the game and you get to level 65, these are fine to use until you've got something else. Um, but, but I would be looking to upgrade to something else as soon as you can. Something like a Melek or something like that. So that's another reason for leveling 65. And you can see there's one of these for each individual class. So for Waker, you know, you get an Agenti Harmonizer. Or tech to you get an Argenti Talus and an Argenti Wand, and so on. And just to let you know, you can actually do these per character as well. So if I hit Hunter 65 on several characters, I would get several of these Argenti weapons. So they're definitely worth doing. Now, the next thing that you probably want to look for is ways to get money. So one thing you always want to be doing in NGS is you always want to be completing your daily tasks. So again, if you go into your task menu, You'll have a tab for daily. And this is how it looks when you first log in. So you'll always have a, have a selection of daily tasks. And these will change every day. But they'll always be quite similar. So one of them will always be user food stand. That is a really, really simple one. All you do for that is at any Ryuk device or at the NPC in Alio. Just go to here, go on cook quick food. And just use whatever time items you want to use. You don't even have to use 10, to be honest, but you get the best boost if you do use 10. And you can see there that it pops up on the left there. 1,000 Mazetta um, and 50,000 experience. Now, 1,000 Mazetta obviously isn't great, but that took literally seconds to do. However, then we've got these other daily tasks. So we've got user region mag. This is literally just a case of going to a region mag and putting a couple of items in it. And again, that'll give you another 1,000 Mazetta and another 50,000 experience. These will also level up your uh, mission pass as well. So these will help you to get the items in the mission pass. We've then also got every day there'll also be clear seal exploration. So this is the quest Halfa Environmental Testing Zone Server. It's the quest that takes place in Lasile. And you complete that once and it will give you 30 growth mint. 
which you can exchange in the growth men shop to get things like the Verschmelz weapons. So that's also really, really useful. Then you normally have some kind of gathering daily as well. So today it's forging from uh, forging from minerals in Kavirus. But this could be, for example, gathering Tames meat in Ratem or obtaining minerals in Elio, um, obtaining seafood in um, Elio or Ratem or Stia. So they, they'll differ each day a little bit. So today it's minerals in Kavirus. So all you need to do for this one is my best place to go for minerals in Kaveris is normally Mistra. So basically, if you go to the Mistra Woods North Ryuka. And all you want to do is head for the river. And when you get down here, you'll notice that it's more or less as soon as you drop down, you'll start getting mineral deposits. And say there's four on chunks there. There's some tetracite. That's already completed that daily. However, what I would recommend is, particularly if you get this one, I would just run all the way down this river because there's tons and tons of mineral nodes down here. So it's definitely worth doing. Next one is there's always a combat sector daily. So again, this will change area each day. So today it's Caveris. You'll tend to find that the gathering one and the combat sector one will always be in the same region as well. So for this one, all we have to, have to do is go to either Belagana Ruins or Lost Central and kill 50 enemies. And again, that will actually give us 1,000 Mazetta and 100,000 experience. Now, occasionally you'll get this one pop up as well, which is clear the limited time quest. This will obviously only appear if there is a limited time quest active. And again, that will give us 30,000 experience and a special scratch ticket. Finally, we've got this last one, which is complete daily tasks. Now, what this is... It asks you to complete four daily tasks, so you don't have to do them all. You can just pick any four of these that are in the list. And when you get this, this will give you 130,000 Mazetta and 200,000 experience, plus some grinders and some points towards your mission pass. So this is where you get your main bulk of money from, from your dailies. So you essentially just want to log in, do four of the dailies. You can do them all if you want to, and you'll get 130,000 Mazetta. Now, you can only do this one character per day. You can't do it every single character. Um, but it's a guaranteed 130,000 Mazetta every day. Which, if you're doing this, on top of collecting things like the Alpha Reactors and the um, Snarl in Kaveris, you can earn a reasonable amount of money every day just from doing that. So that's definitely something you want to look out for. So next up is, you might be interested in doing the Creative Space as well. And obviously for the Creative Space, one thing you do need, tend to need is a lot of Genesis Points. So, again, for getting Genesis points, there are a couple of ways of getting it. So, first one is, if you've got the creative space... And what you want to do is, each creative space will have one of these, which is called a GP tree, or a Genesis tree. And by interacting with these, you'll get Genesis points. Now, you can only collect a certain amount per day. And these trees will be different colors depending on how many points they've got. So mine at the moment actually isn't that great. Um, you can see there's not many branches or anything on it. So I would maybe check out another creative space and see if there's a better tree. So if we go to, for example, let's go to... Let's just go to one of the official Sega spaces and see what they've got. Yeah, so yeah, I did want to be doing these every day just to, to earn Genesis points, money... Um, they really don't take long to do at all. It's going to be a couple of minutes each day to do. It's well worth doing just to get that little daily boost. So you can see that this tree is still not the best you can get, but it is, you know, you can see it's got a lot more leaves than the one that was in my creative space, and it is a bit bigger, so this will give more points. So if we interact with that, we get 200 Genesis points. Now, there are other ways of getting Genesis points as well. So one way is through your mission pass. So the mission pass at certain points seems to be only on the premium mission pass unfortunately but every now and again there are points where you'll get genesis points so you can see here at tier one we get a thousand a tier four we get two thousand a tier nine we get two thousand i think that might be it. it tends to just be at the beginning of the pass yeah that's it so you can get them from there the other way of getting them is again if you go into your tasks normally in the limited time tasks there is a lot of creative space ones as well. 
Now, at the moment, these are going on until March. I don't know if they'll be extended beyond then, but um, there's a possibility they may be. I would definitely do these, though, for the time being, because they do give you a little boost to your GP. And they're really, really simple to do. So it is just things like go to your creator space and enter edit mode, which if you don't know how to do that, I just go back to my creator space again. Literally, all you have to do to enter edit mode is press R1. That's it. You can see that it popped up on the left that I've created that I've completed that task. So that was fifteen hundred Genesis points. So super, super simple to do. But there is quite a few different ones as well. So again, if we go back, there's ones like you know user design, like uh, you know pre-built design in your creative space, change the color of a build part. And visit some featured spaces and so on so they are very very easy to get and they, they, like i said they give you a reasonable amount of genesis points yeah, so you can see here if you go to the genesis points build path there is actually a big list here where you can exchange for any of them so any extra genesis points you can get is going to help so those are the main things i would look out for early on in regards to actually improving your gear um, honestly, one of the easiest ways of doing that is probably just to buy things from the player shop at the moment. A lot of the, the weapons in NGS are actually really, really cheap at the minute. So if I go to... I go back to the, the actual regular map. What I would probably recommend is just scouring the player shops and looking for gear that way. Um, I wouldn't look for things that are already affixed or anything like that because they, de they do tend to be very expensive. But what I would do is just look for you know base gear and then add your own affixes to it. So you can say, let's say, let's say on this range, I want to use a, a, a decent nine star rifle, for example. So I could go with a TESA rifle, for example. So just search for a TESA. TESA rifle. You can see that it's going for 4,000 Mazetta, which is nothing. So what I would probably do is look through these. You could go one without a fixer if you want to, but it might work just looking to see how much the fixer ones are. So I've got one there with fixer unwix, which I'd probably avoid because I don't really think unwix is that good. And um, fixer wix isn't too bad. But you can see that they're not massively expensive to get one with fixer. You could even go with one with fixer blaster. And um, so I'd probably just do that and just look through the player shops and just see what you're happy spending. It's probably a lot easier to do that than try actually hunting the drops because teasers still don't drop that often. They are a lot more frequent than they used to be, but they you're probably still going to be there a while if you're specifically hunting for a specific teaser or a specific rare drop of any kind. So a lot of things in NGS you can just get easier just by buying them through the player shops. So I'd probably do that. And then I would just run Lucille every day to get the Lucille capsules or run the limited quest to make sure you're getting the limited quest um, Lucille capsules as well. And then use those to affix your weapons with. And that should give you perfectly reasonable gear um, until you can find some uh, the 10 stars like the Flugel Guard or the uh, Rear items. So that's what I would personally do if I was just starting out now. Um, don't worry too much about running your own player shop. If you if you do the mission pass, you can get like three day passes through that anywhere. So what I would probably do, if you don't want to use premium, I would just personally get the three day shop pass get all the things that you want to sell together and then just sell them all while you've got the three-day shop pass. If you do want to use premium, though, then obviously you've got your play shop open all the time, so that's another option you can go with as well. Um, but don't feel you have to use premium. It's, it does give you some nice bonuses, but it's not necessary to play the game. So I hope that's been relatively useful. I know it's a fairly short video overall, but I just wanted to do a very quick video just for some people who might be getting started with NGS for the first time, um, just to help you out when you're very first getting started with the game. As usual, if you've got any questions at all about anything to do with NGS, just leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer what I can. Um, I typically do two videos a week. It's normally one NGS video and one for another Fantasy Star, which will either be PSO, PSU or something else. And they also stream once a week on YouTube as well, which is normally on a Sunday. You can also follow me on X, which is at Section Skylight. And I normally post on there whenever a new video or a live stream is going live. So feel free to follow me over there. Uh, but in the meantime, hope this has been useful for beginners to NGS. If you like what you're seeing, please consider liking or subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.